I want to close this beautiful time before we go into the word with Psalm 121. I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence comes my help. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not allow your foot to, your foot to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by the day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen, family. Oh, amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. We say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Coming out of such a beautiful time together. Coming out with a beautiful time together. Just resting. Resting in the Lord's presence. And that's what it's all about. Today, today is kingdom business. I promise you guys, today is kin kingdom business. Every Thursday is kingdom business. And usually every kingdom business is related to the lesson for the week. Now, uh, Tuesday's lesson was train up a child. Tuesday's lesson was train up a child. And then I also got into all the examples I've come across when teaching all the ways I ran into young people who were not trained up correctly. So today's, you're gonna have a great, you're gonna have fun today, but never, never let me start, let me start by this. We're gonna have fun, but remember on Kingdom Business, even though you guys get to share your own stories and testimonies, if you have a long testimony, I want you to put the entire testimony under the video. So when you're doing it, when you're doing a testimony, if your, if your sharing has a lot of details, I want you to put the entire story, not live, but under the video, so we can go and read all of it. When you share, share the main points. So I want to make sure everybody gets time to comment. Amen. So there's a lot of great stuff. I'm not, I'm not going to tell you the topic yet because I know you guys are going to be excited. You can't wait for this topic. Now I'm going to tell you it's related to Tuesday. Now, like I said before, Tuesday was train up a child. The same scriptures, the same text, the same. Proverbs, Proverbs 22, 6. Proverbs 22, 6. That's train up a child the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. That's Proverbs 22, 6. And then there's Ephesians. I think the other text, the other text is Ephesians, Ephesians 6, 4. Ephesians, oh my Bible term, Ephesians 6, 1 through 4. And that reads, Ephesians 6, 1 through 4. Children. Obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and your mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with you and you may live long on the earth. And fathers, do not provoke, do not provoke your children to wrath, but bring him up in training, bring him up in training and admonition of the Lord. That's Ephesians 1 through Ephesians 6, 1 through 4. Now, obviously, obviously, if everybody was doing that, if everyone was doing that, we'd have no young people who are having all kinds of stresses and mental struggles and breaking out and, and lashing out at school. If everybody was doing that right there, what 
what is it? Let me read that there. Raising them up in training and admonition of the Lord. You're teaching them the word of God. You're teaching them the word of God. You're showing them how to live the word of God by your behavior. And you plant as many seeds as you can. Even if it looks like they're not listening. Even if it looks like a young person isn't listening. Plant the seed. Plant the seed. If they keep they keep hearing you say the word. And they keep you saying the word. Guess what? Every time you say the word, they hear it. If they hear it, you plant a seed. If you say the word out loud and your kids hear it, guess what? If they heard it, if they heard it, you plant a seed. Now, it doesn't matter at that point how they react. Don't even worry about how they react. Just keep saying the word. Keep saying the word and keep living the word. Keep saying the word and live the word. Say the word, live the word, say the word. By behavior, what's happening? You're teaching them by example how to say the word and live the word. Say the word and live the word. My perfect example, I gave you of one other lesson. I gave you example, one other lesson before we I leave you guys comments. The best example of what the day's lesson's about, my son in high school, my son in high school had the ability to memorize every rap song in minutes. He could memorize, he could remember every rap song in minutes. I said, wait a minute, you can remember a rap song, but you can't remember a spelling list? You can't, wait, we, you, wait hold up, hold up, hold up. We gotta get some word in there. Yes, you listen to rap all day long, but guess what? You gonna get some word in there too. <laughs> so every time we went to school, uh, I, I forgot to read, I meant to read today. One of, in the, in the prep booklet, one of the scriptures is, Successful living by the word of God is one of the things we read in the prayer booklet. It takes about seven minutes to read. On the way to school every day, I was I would have him read it with me in traffic on the way to school. I always started. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. And, and it went for seven minutes of just scriptures. So every time we got in the car, eventually all I said, this, and he said, I know this is a day the Lord has made. I was yours and be glad in it. <laughs> that's 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 how he said it at first. Because he knew whenever we got in the car to go to school, he's going to hear this is a day I know the Lord has made. I was yours and be glad in it. I know, Dad. I know this is a day Lord has <laughs> So eventually, he just started saying it and the attitude left. And he eventually memorized the entire seven minutes. Now, here's what I didn't know. What I didn't know, so I had no idea what was sticking because he was still listening. He was still listening to rap. So I had no idea what was sticking. I just knew that every time we drove to school, we had to say the entire thing in traffic all the way to school. And so every time we went to school, he had seven minutes of word to say with me all the way to school. So here's the blessing. Here's the blessing. When he got to college, he got to college, he called me and said, Dad, something's really amazing. You know, you remember that thing you had me read with you? You had me re read that thing with you? Well, when I got to college, I went, I got down on my knees and pray. I didn't know what to pray. So all of a sudden, what came to my spirit is that seven minutes you had me read the word in school, in high school. Every time I knelt down to pray, I kept remembering this is the day the Lord has made. So that seven minutes at first became his prayer in college. I had no idea. I had no idea what he was going to do when he went to college. But when he went to pray at college, he remembered the entire seven minutes we used to say in the car, and that became his prayer for many months. And then eventually, it led him to learn how to pray by himself. And now he's a mighty man of God. He's always on fire for the Lord. He's got his kids praying. So we never know. We never know when you plant a seed. When you train up a child and you plant the seed in their spirit, even though we don't see it right now, even though you don't see it right now, if you plant a seed, it's going to, the, the word shall not return void. Remember, the word says, the word shall not return void. So if your kid or young person hears the word of God enough, that word in them, that word in them shall not return void. And that's why we, that's why we must keep planting a seed however we can by scriptures or by behavior. And that's the perfect example of what our kingdom is, is about today. Now, your turn. Now, here's where you guys get to share. My question is, 
for you guys to share. What have you done as an adult? What things have you done either either to plant seeds in a young person or to be effective to them? What things are you do or have you done that has worked in planting seeds in a young person? Now, like I said, sometimes you don't know. But I want you to share with me if you've seen a result of something that you planted, you see the behavior change, or you saw they suddenly stop living wrong. It doesn't matter what it is. I just want to make sure we're sharing what things do you do to help plant the seed. And if you have something that's a praise report, like my son praying in college, I had no idea. I had no idea that was coming. So if you have, if you have a praise report, share that as well. But I mainly want to find out what things do you do by behavior or sharing what kinds of things do you do to help a young person get planted the seed of the word of God in their spirit? This is your turn now. This is where you guys get to share. Now I'm going to read what you share. Now if, remember, if you have a long testimony, leave that under the video. But I want to hear what you guys, have, what, what ways do you share the word or help a young person get that word of God in them? Your turn. <laughs> Amen. Now, I know we have many teachers. I know John is a Sunday school teacher. I think Miss T is a teacher. I know Woman of God is a teacher. I used to be a teacher. And there may be other teachers. So, however, not just teachers, if you deal with a young person, I want you to share. Amen? Amen. Amen. Uh, Glenda, even though, even though you don't see it, it's working and never stops working. Amen, Glenda? Once you plant that seed, it's in them. Once you plant the seed, it is in them. Either they fight it. Or they go with it now either they fight it or they go with it but it's still in them that's the problem that's a good point it's still in them uh jana teaching sunday school children and young uh young grades k, k through six and sharing the lessons based on the word amen amen jana and the sunday school and, and sunday school is some sometimes sunday school is hard because the kids expect sunday school to be lax they think Sunday school is a vacation. And when Johnny gets in there, she's teaching the word of God as if they're in a regular school during the week. And some kids think Sunday school is supposed to be a vacation and do nothing and just color and paint and talk. No, no. When they get in the, they get in the classroom, they're talking about the word of God. Some of these kids are praying like, like, young, like adults. These kids are on fire for the Lord. It is so good to see young people on fire for the Lord. It helps you have, it, it helps you have hope for the future. Amen. Uh, Jonna, sharing life, sharing life lessons based on the word. Amen. Sharing life lessons. A young person loves to talk. Let me say it again. A young person loves to talk. And when you're sharing, especially not talking down to them, not talking down to them, when you're having a conversation and you're just talking about life, a young person likes to talk about life. That's when they open up. If they think you're talking down to them, they won't talk. If they think you're talking down to them, they'll never talk. But if they have a conversation and they feel you're sharing and they feel that you care, then all of a sudden they open up and tell you their problems, their challenges. They'll tell you everything when you have a conversation and don't. Uh, Jonna, children and young people are bringing life into the classroom now and they keep uh, and they're looking for answers from adults and they may not get it home amen they come to school or Sunday school to get answers they may not get it home good point Jonna good point some kids will talk to a teacher but about what's going on at home I told this on Tuesday sometimes a kid will tell you I I'm having trouble at home I it, it, it won't work my parents don't care it can be something that that cryptic my my parents don't care sometimes I had a bad kid in the class I said, I'm gonna call your parents. And the kids said, I don't care. They don't care. You call my call my parents. They don't care. And that tells you something. What's going on at home? Amen. That's what it's all about. That is what it's all about. Cause we know. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, uh, Kathleen, Ephesians 6, full of armor. You read that to your son Bryce every morning when he was in elementary school, before school, and now he's 26, and seeds are planted daily, praying. And claiming and decreeing amen kathleen even when they leave and go on their own we still pray for them amen kathleen we plant the seed and when they're grown we keep praying for them 
Because when they leave, when they leave, they still need prayer. Because when they leave the home, they're in the world by themselves now. And we hope and pray they'll stay in the word. Amen. Um, Rodan, I, I, I listen. I listen to them. And then I ask the Holy Spirit to inspire my words and carefully, carefully respond to their situation, inserting spiritual principles. As I go, I let them know that they have a friend in Jesus. Amen, Don. That's very, that's a good, that's a good way. That's another good way to approach them. Again, like as you see both in Kathleen and Don, when you talk to a person, to you talk to them and not at them, that is the key to them receiving what you're saying. They think you love them and they, they really want, they, they want people to care about them. And when you talk to them, they feel love. They feel they mean something. When you talk at them, they shut down and you lose them that, that quickly. Amen. Uh, see, uh, uh, see, woman of God, first I ask the students if they go to church and then if they're having a hard time, I tell them to repeat in their head, Jesus help me, Jesus help me. Then they smile and become calm. Amen, woman of God. Amen. Now, now woman of God, woman of God, do you, in, in San Diego, uh, uh, woman of God, in San Diego, do, do, do you have the same pressure in L.A.? In L.A., if you mention God the classroom, you get written up. In Los Angeles, if you mention God in a classroom, you get written up. Because you're not supposed to push, not supposed to push God in the classroom. Hey, wait a minute. Hold up. If a if a, if a kid asked me, what kid asked me, uh, Mr. Mr. Houston, uh, do you believe in the Big Bang or do you believe in creation? <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. The kid comes up and we're in science class. I mean, science class. The kid says, uh, Mr. Houston, which do you believe? Do you believe the Big Bang or do you believe in creation? Okay. Okay, I gotta be I get I gotta be careful here. I gotta be careful how I how I answer that. Now we're not supposed to mention God. The kid comes to me and asks me, do I believe in creation or the Big Bang? So what I said, well, I said, now let me say, let me tell you this. Well, you know, there are two theories. This is how I, I had to do this very carefully to not get written up. I said, well, there are two theories, of course, that the world just the, the universe just blew up and became a universe in perfect order. And then there's a the theory that Things came together and were created and put the way they are. See, now, I personally believe in the theory that things were created. So I had to present it as there are theories of the Big Bang. There are theories of the of the creation. But I was still able to tell the kid, I believe in the theory <laughs> of creation that things don't just suddenly have order. When there's an explosion, things don't land in order. The, the universe is perfectly balanced. You got galaxies, you got, you got suns with, with the planets perfectly aligned over and over again. God's order is repetitious and his order is all over the universe. When you have an explosion, when you, when you watch an explosion, nothing lands in order. It lands in chaos. So that's kind of a way of trying to let people understand that. Amen. Uh, let's see, let me go back up here. Amen. Uh, Sheila, I get to say, you get to say your scriptures with them. You, you get them to say scriptures with you. Amen, Sheila. Say scriptures with you. Amen. Praise God. That's, the, that's, that's like my son. When they say scriptures with you and they know they have to say it, if you say it every day, eventually the scriptures are taking root. Amen, Sheila. I said, read the word to them. Reading the word to them. Amen. Amen, bro, Don. <laughs> Amen, Don. Uh, Loggy Doggy, hey Loggy Doggy, Brazil in the house. Hey Loggy Doggy, I let them know I used to I used to deal in the streets before I was saved, and how I deal with it now with Christ, and with Christ's help. You you tell them how you used to be in the street, and now you tell them how you deal with it now with Christ's help. Amen. Your testimony. Amen, Loggy Doggy. There's nothing like your testimony. There is power in your testimony. Amen, Kathleen. Wasn't that crazy? <laughs> now, now, the good thing, the good thing that's happened, and this, this is a result of planting seeds. Even though in the school you can't mention God, what they do say is their freedom of religion. And there are enough young people 
in schools who are Christians and they formed a Christian club. In your face, devil. <laughs> in your face, devil. Yes, you say, we the teacher, we the teacher can't mention God in the classroom. But if the kids come together and form a Christian club and they meet at lunchtime and talk about God, they can't stop that. In your face, devil, they can't stop that because a Christian club is freedom of freedom of religion and other 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 groups come together whatever the religion is but there there is christian clubs in schools and they meet and talk about god at lunchtime so praise god for that victory praise god for that victory amen um jonna my mom my mom was a christian and the daughter of a minister and science teacher and kids asked her that all the time amen jonna they always ask about creation and the word see kids want to know kids want to know and so as teachers our hands are tied because we get written up saying we're pushing god on the kids if we if we teach anything about what we feel so we have to be very careful how we mention god in a classroom to be able to keep your job it, it's a sad state as soon as they took god out of school as soon as they took the lord's prayer out of schools that's when problems started in my opinion when they took the Lord's Prayer out of schools, that's when things went crazy. Now that you can't say, you can't say, remember, remember the old days? The old days, uh, give me a thumbs up, old days, you said the you said the Pledge of Allegiance, and then you said the Lord's Prayer. Does anybody remember, I'm, 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 I'm dating myself now, I'm dating myself, does anybody remember the days when you said the Pledge of Allegiance, and you followed it with the Lord's Prayer? That used to be, that used to be the, the, what it was. The Lord's Prayer and the Pledge of Allegiance with how you started class. And now what? Now you can't mention God. <laughs> and you wonder why the schools, you wonder why the schools are all over the place and all the crazy stuff going on. Amen? Amen. Let me go back here. Um, uh, Nedra, I read and pray and watch Bible shows with my grandkids. And when they see me, they want to pray and praise God. Amen, amen, Nedra. They asked me to pray with them, age two and six. Amen, Nedra. Age two and six. They ask you to pray with them. That is those seeds of planet. Praise God, Nedra. Those are seeds planted. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Woman of God. We're not supposed to, but that's why I test the waters by asking them if they go to church or not. Once they state where they go to church. Then I proceed. Now, woman of God, woman of God, even with that, in Los Angeles, unless the kid actually starts to question, we still have to be very careful. When, when, at least while I'm still teaching, when you answer any question about God, all you need is one kid to say, well, teacher, the teacher was talking about God today. And the te and you called into the office, uh, were you teaching God today? No, I wasn't teaching God. I was giving him my feelings about a question he asked me about God. I wasn't teaching God in the curriculum. That's not the curriculum. But the kid asked me this question. I'm going to answer that question. If I mention God, that's the answer to the question. So I'm not teaching God. I'm sharing how I feel about what he asked me about God. Now, if that's a problem, hey, if that's a problem, then I guess I don't need this class. If that's a problem, then if I can't answer a question the kid is asking me about God, then I'm in the wrong, I'm in the wrong school. See, that's that's the challenge. That is a challenge in schools right now. And that's why the schools are going crazy right now with shootings and fighting and all the kids. Because once you take God out of schools and you take God out of the mix, the devil comes in with total chaos and violence and all the stuff. Amen, Kathleen. They want they want to know the truth. Yeah, yes, uh, woman of God. Yes, we were doing science. It was the, the chapter was on the Big Bang Theory. The chapter was on the Big Bang Theory. And then the kids said, uh, Mr. Houston, uh, do you believe the Big Bang Theory or creation? Now, the book didn't say anything about creation. That means that kid is a Christian because he's reading the book about the Big Bang and he raises his hand and says, Mr. Houston, is do you believe in the Big, the big Bang? Or creation and that's how it came up because we were reading about the Big Bang Theory and so the young man wanted to know the truth about what what what, what do you believe what do you believe Miss Houston what do you believe <laughs> 
See, so that's why I had to be careful how I answered. At the same time, at the same time as I answered him, I was still sharing the, the creation. Because obviously, the kid knew what creation is. For him to ask me, do I believe in creation or the Big Bang? It means that kid knew creation theory. He knew theory about the word of God and creation. For him to ask me, what do I believe? It means that young man is a Christian and he, he knows about creation. And now he's reading about the Big Bang Theory and it doesn't make sense to him. How, how do they match? So that's, that's why we have to be ready. That's how we have to be ready and, and just answer uh, like I did. I wasn't saying I'm teaching, I'm not teaching creation. The kid asked me a question. I'm answering his question. I'm not teaching creation. I'm sharing what he asked me. And then for any further details. Now, if I had gone into further details, let's turn to John chapter two. <laughs> then, then I'd be fired. <laughs> well, let's go, let's go back. Let's turn to Genesis chapter one. Oh, uh, excuse me. Uh, Mr. Houston coming to office. You're fired. <laughs> <laughs> so so that's 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 where that's where I had to be careful. I could answer the question, but I couldn't go any further. I could answer the question, but I couldn't say go look look at Genesis. I couldn't say turn the word of God and read this chapter. Cause now now I'm teaching the word of God. Even though I want to, I can't do that because that's what the the schools are pressured to not let you do. Amen. A word of God. My mother was a, a school counselor and was the first person to start a Christian club on the campus with students at lunchtime. Amen. Amen, one of God. So your mother was was instigator of a Christian club. Amen. Uh, let's see. Indy, hey, Indy Buzz. Indy Buzz. Hey, amen. Uh, blessings. Amen. And welcome, Indy Buzz. Cinnamon, I would have my I would have a little grand my, I would have my little godson with me in the car, and he see me pray. Uh, he see me pray all the time over our ride amen praying over the meal all the time amen 777 you're teaching him to pray in the car for safety you teach him to pray over your food amen see right there he sees you do it every day and when you do something every day when you do it every day those seeds are planted as a behavior and they see it they see it every day they hear it every day and what happens is you burn it into the spirit and mind every day. Amen, Dana. Uh, Glenda, we sang the we we sang the hymn. Uh, we we sang the hymn. Morning. Uh, oh, the morning has broken the light. The first morning, and then went into our, our father's prayer. Okay, you, you you sang the hymn in the morning, and the and, and has the broken light has broken uh, something. I'm, I'm missing something there. And uh, you sang the first morning. You sang it every morning, and then you went into the father's prayer. Amen. Praise God. See, the key is what? You did it every day. You did it. You sang the hymn every day. And you went to the Father's Prayer, the Lord's Prayer. Amen. See, every day, when you do it every day, you're planting seeds. Amen. Uh, it's the start of your home. It's, it's, it starts at home. Amen. A sentiment. It starts at home. But some kids don't have it at home. That's the problem. When you come to school as a teacher, you can tell what is not at home. You can tell if God is not at home. By the way the kids act, you understand God's not at home. This kid has no prayer, no support spiritually at home. By how they come to school and they act out all kinds of ways, you know that God is not in the middle of the home. And that's how you recognize behavior we've talked about on Tuesday. Uh, Cinnamon, praying over your children and your children's children. Amen, Cinnamon. Amen. 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 Deanne, I play gospel music in the car all the time. And when my children were growing up, they did they, they knew we did not listen to boogie, boogie music in mama's car. <laughs> Amen, Deanne. Hey, turn that stuff off. We don't listen to no boogie music in the car. We praising God. <laughs> I know a a, a seven. I mean, uh, uh, Deanne, I know what you're talking about. I pray, pray, I pray, praise music, praise, praise music, and gospel music. And even even though even though they say, "Oh man, what can't we listen to something else? Can't we listen to something else?" Uh, yeah, when you grow up and get your own car, 
Yes, yes, you can play something else. When you grow up and get your own car, you can play whatever you want. But right now, in my house, for me and my house and my car, we serve the Lord. Amen. <laughs> hey, praise God. Um, amen. <laughs> amen. Even though it's hard, uh, loggy doggy, big bang theory, something came from nothing. And, 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 and loggy, loggy doggy, not just something came from nothing, and it, it came from an explosion. Order, this loggy doggy, order came from an explosion. There was an explosion and everything landed in perfect order. Have you ever seen any explosion land in perfect order? No, when something explodes, it's all over the place. So in the Big Bang Theory, if it explodes and then we have perfect order, all the planets balance, all the, all the suns have exactly the right types of organs, all the orbits of the planets are perfectly aligned, that's order. Chaos doesn't come from order. Ch uh, order doesn't come from chaos. A chaos doesn't come from order. So that's when you know there's a direct com uh, com conflict right there. Amen. Uh, the uh, 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 Glinda spiritually, spiritually, I was teaching God because He prompted the child to share His word to classroom, planting seeds. Amen. Amen. Uh, Glinda, just by the kid, but even though the other kids. May or might, may not know what creation is. That kid asking me, Mr. Houston, do you believe in creation or Big Bang? So I had to explain the theory of creation in order to answer this question. So the other kids who may never know what creation is, then they, amen, Glenda, they did learn something. For me to be able to answer this question, I had to say, well, the theory of the theory of the Big Bang is this. And the theory of creation is this. Now, what I believe, I believe in this theory. So I'm telling him, but in the process of sharing both theories, the kids who didn't know the word of God about creation, they learned what the creation theory is. So they understand there is something other than the Big Bang. Amen. Amen. Uh, woman of God. A uh, woman of God. Uh, yes, it's a risk, but I usually let the spirit, uh, if God tells me to mention his name to a student i will oh yes see see uh woman of god when 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 a, when a kid is trying to talk to you the only time we get in trouble as teachers is if we bring it up and we go into detail if the kid wants to talk to you uh, as a teacher and he comes to you and wants to ask help and you must mention god to answer the question you're not teaching you're sharing but if you go to the front of class, okay, kids, today, uh, take your, uh, did anybody bring your Bible? Uh, bring your Bible out. That's where you're in trouble. When you you go to class and you tell the kids, take out your Bible and turn to John, 20, John 1, <laughs> that's where you're in trouble. But if you talk about in answering a question, you're sharing, even though it's the word of God, you're sharing because they asked the question first and they want to an answer and they get an answer. If the... If the administration has a problem with that, if the administration has a problem with that, then hey, excuse me, don't call me back to this school. I, I was a substitute. Say don't don't call me back to this school. If that's a problem, to answer a kid's question with truth, with truth. See, if you have a problem with truth, then I'm in the wrong place. I'm in the wrong place if I can't answer a question with truth. And see, the thing that the, about about ten about ten years ago. The, the thing that really happened that really upset me is in, in Los Angeles, they started, they told the teachers they had to teach, they had to teach same sex marriage as a alternative. They had to teach homosexuality as a alternative lifestyle. The teachers had no choice. They told all the science teachers and health teachers that you're going to start teaching homosexuality as an alternative lifestyle. And the teachers had no choice. So now I have I retired before that camp. I had just retired when this happened. A lot of teachers were upset. A lot of teachers say, wait a minute. We, 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 you, you say we have to? You're not giving us a choice. You didn't get a vote. The law was passed. The school district passed the law that this year you will teach homosexuality as an alternative lifestyle that there's no vote there is no vote this year this is how you teach it that happened right after I, I retired in 2012 so I have no idea how to handle that I'm I'm sure there are questions about that in school 
Amen. Uh, Glenda, uh, you you play gospel music in your car. Amen. 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 Uh, perfect order. Amen. Kathleen, God is perfect order. Amen. Cinnamon, I remember the Lord's prayer and the pledge of allegiance. Hey, hey, we're, we're dating ourselves. We're, uh, give me a thumbs up. Those who remember the pledge of allegiance and Lord's prayer, give me a thumbs up before we close. Before we close, if you remember the Lord's prayer and the pledge of allegiance together, give me a thumbs up. Now we're dating ourselves. Yes, I'm 69. Yes, yes, I'm 69. Yes, I'm 69. And I remember, yes, I remember the Pledge of Allegiance and the go and the Lord's Prayer together at the start of school. So shame the devil and tell the truth. <laughs> uh, Kathleen, I led my 88-year-old dad to the Lord two years ago. Praise God, Kathleen. And he was he was an a, a atheist. Whoa, he was an atheist. Evolutionist, oh my God! Praise God! He lives in New York and uh, New Mexico, and now he we pray on the phone together. If you're never you're never too old, Amen, well, Kathleen. You are never too old to receive Jesus. You are never too old to get saved, Amen. Praise boy, praise God, Kathleen. Praise God, Ajana. Uh, they had to teach. They had to teach it to middle school kids in health class. Yes, they have to teach it. You have no choice. It was a law that this year. This is how you teach homosexuality, and, and you told them in health class, and the and the teachers got no vote. There was no discussion. They just said, "This year, this is what you're going to do." And a lot of teachers were upset because they had no choice. Amen. Uh, Glenda, kids that are in the music will quickly learn the word of God through gospel rap. Amen. Gospel rap and many more good vibe music planting seeds. Amen. Amen. There is there is good music. Justin remembers. Uh, Deanna remembers. <laughs> Amen. Uh, Don, I was required. I was required to say them each day. Amen. Don. Uh, Don, are you talking about the the Lord's prayer and the pledge? Uh, is that what you're saying, Don? Amen. Amen. Required. Yes. Ella. Ella Williams. Hey, Ella Williams. Ella T and Ella Williams. Ella Williams. Welcome, to Florida. You remember as well. Diana remembers. Amen. Okay. Good. I don't feel so bad. And if other people remember, okay, I'm not I'm not old by myself. <laughs> my generation, I'm, I'm so glad to have other people in my generation who remembers the Lord's Prayer with the Pledge of Allegiance. So now, shame the devil and tell the truth. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Nedra. Nedra. Amen, Nedra. Okay. <laughs> Justine, being exposed, being exposed, it's being exposed parents are pushing back amen oh, it, 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 oh praise god uh you mean the, uh, uh justine are you talking about the uh the, the teaching in, in schools justine are you talking about the teaching in school that parents are now pushing back praise god i hope so i hope so justine because the teachers had no choice amen Lori t people stand their ground and walk off the jobs Amen. Amen, Lord T. I wondered how that turned out because I had just retired. I had just retired. I had no idea how that turned out. So I'm glad to hear that the parents, the parents are upset and some teachers are walking off their job. And you tell them to make them teach that. Amen. Amen. Uh, long life is a blessing from God. Amen, Lord T. A cinnamon, the father heard me as well. And I think I think he secretly the, your, your father heard you. The Father heard you as well, and I think he secretly praised the God. Amen, uh, Cinnamon. Praise God. Snurks, things were so much simpler then because we had the power of prayer protecting us in school. That's why schools are so crazy. There is no prayer in school now. There is no prayer. And that, now you have the gun, you have the gun, metal detectors because guns are in school now. You got guns in school, weapons in school. And what, what happened to teaching? So it's, it is very sad that now the schools are all chaotic because once you take God out of school and you take order out of school and there's co you're trying to teach a class with total chaos in the environment. Amen. Amen. Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, we get ready to close. Uh, Justine, a lot of erroneous teaching is straight grooming. A lot of erroneous teaching. Amen. Amen. Uh, Justine, that's right. There, 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 Erroneous teaching, erroneous teaching is no different than a false doctrine. If you're teaching something in error, 
that is becoming a false doctrine and people don't realize it if you're not teaching the truth if you're not teaching the truth that is a false doctrine if it's not the truth it's false very simple if it's not the truth it's a false doctrine amen let me get it close let me close amen um uh glenda my teenage my teenage grandkids i pr i pray for them and we love gospel you, you pray you play with them and you love gospel music gospel rap amen amen glenda i mean i mean nedra i mean that's in that as a that's nedra amen nedra amen okay last one uh john it was on the ballot in oregon in a, in the early 2000s and the voters voted it down amen john praise god i'm glad somebody somebody resisted amen praise god amen uh justine they're they're telling kids don't tell your parents what goes on in class what justine are you kidding me they're telling the kids don't tell the parents what is being taught in the classroom are you kidding me excuse me oh help me somebody help me somebody uh i i love the lord's i love the lord's prayer i say it every day i have found many people who don't want to say it anymore and i don't I, I, don i have no idea i have no idea why people will say the lord's prayer the lord's prayer was what jesus told the disciples to learn how to pray if you, if, you, if, if you don't know how to pray, the Lord's Prayer is what you start with. And usually, when you start with the Lord's Prayer, it teaches you the structure of prayer. And then you go out from there, and then you may move on. But don't don't read it. I have no idea why they haven't done. You're right, a lot of people. Uh, Snurks got to send our schools covered. Send our kids to school covered in prayer. Like Cinema said, pray over your kids before they leave the house. Pray over your kids before they leave the house and put a covering on them. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Liz, I'm waiting for my daughter to get, I'm waiting for my grand, I'm waiting for my daughter to see me, uh, oh, <laughs> to, to see me, to give me a grandchild so I can teach them. I got it. Uh, Liz, I'm waiting for my daughter to give me a grandchild so I can teach them. Amen. Hey, hey, hey Liz, in Jesus' name. <laughs> and, and those valuable lessons. Amen. Praise God. Amen. 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 Praise God. Oh, glory to God. Uh, let's see. Amen. Amen. Uh, Cinnamon, that's why I always pray for Brandon, my older son, uh, because even, even though he heard me pray, that the devil would raise him up through anger, and I still pray the Lord to save his soul. Save his soul. Amen, Cinnamon. We keep praying. We keep praying. We keep praying. Uh, Jonna, teachers making kids. Oh, I lost some here. Uh, oh, where'd Jonna go? Oh, I lost you, Jonna. Okay. Uh, Justine, last one. Got to get ready to close. Uh, uh, Justine, my mom taught me the Lord's Prayer every night, even before I could read. You were saying Lord's Prayer. My son does the same thing. He's teaching the kids to pray before they can read. You're planting prayer. You're planting the power of prayer in a kid's mind at two years old, three years old. They're just saying it, but as they say it, they get older, they remember it. You're planting the seed before they can even read, yet they remember it because they're saying it. And if they say the word every day, if they say the word every day, it does take root. Uh, John, the teacher, they're making the kids have divided loyalties between their parents and teachers. That's right. When you tell the kids, don't tell your mom and dad what we're teaching, you're separating the kids from the parents. You're teaching something at school and you tell the parents, don't tell your parents what we're talking about. That is teaching division. And that makes things worse at home because they go home with a lie and don't tell the the, the parents, they're listening to a lie at school. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Hey, guys, guys we run out of time. Hey, great, great stuff, y'all. Hey, uh, uh, Gaffin, yes, and words are powerful. Words are powerful. That's why I close. That's why I close. But remember, remember, when you have other comments, leave other comments under the video. Leave other comments under the video for us to share and talk afterwards. So when you have other stuff to say, share it under the video, 
so we can comment to each other after fellowship. It's always good to leave your comments under the video so we can come together and comment on each other's comments after this is over. This, you guys, as always, you guys have shared some great stuff, some great moments, some great advice, some great experiences, and that's what Kingdom Biz is. Kingdom Biz is talking about sharing the word with each other and how we share the word with others. Amen. A few last ones. A uh, few last ones. A uh, cinnamon seven. My spiritual mother. My spiritual mother will get locked up for preaching. What your spiritual mother will get locked up for preaching all the time in Philly downtown. She'll still be praising the Lord, handcuffed, <laughs> and will get back out there and start preaching. She and her husband. Amen, cinnamon. That's on fire for the Lord. Amen. 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 Praise God. Uh, the road, uh, 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 Glenda. The road to lying in theory. That's right, Glenda. When you're lying about what you learn, when you when you go home and lie about what you learn in school, you're teaching the kids to lie. You're teaching to lie. You don't tell your parents what they learn in school, and you don't tell them what they're hearing. That is teaching the kids to lie. Good point. Uh, last one, Jonna. The teachers know they're manipulating the kids. So how can you trust them? In the classroom, amen, Jonna. If the kid, if the teacher is teaching the kid to lie, how can you trust the teacher or the teaching process? That's that's the problem. We're all sharing the problem. So as I close, as I close this, we went, went, went a little bit long, but I knew I knew this was going to be a good topic. I knew this was going to be a good topic, and we had a lot to share. So we went, we went over a, little, a few minutes, but I, I, I thank you guys for sharing. As always, this is so important. Kingdom Biz is sharing with each other our experiences and how we share with each other, how we share the Word of God, how we teach, how we share. That's why I always love Kingdom Biz, and we'll be doing Kingdom Business is every Thursday. Kingdom Business is every Thursday. We'll keep doing it. Amen. Amen, Simon. Amen. Father God, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for this lesson today, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for this lesson to be able to share with each other how we share the word of God with our young people, to be able to plant the seed in a young mind, Lord, a young, impressionable mind, Lord. We thank you, Lord, right now, and ask you to bless every fellowship member right now who is doing their best to spread the gospel however they can to young people and old that we may be able to be stewards of the word and be able to share the word with every age as guided by the Holy Spirit. Lord, I, I ask Lord to bless every fellowship member right now, live or archive, on the screen, off the screen, who can hear my voice to give us each supernatural strength to listen to the Holy Spirit guide us how to react and when to react and what to say with each person who wants to know the truth about the Word of God Lord guide us Lord guide us and lead us to speak the right words at the right time to the right person who needs to hear the Word of God we say thank you right now Lord we just say thank you Lord for all your ways you're blessing the fellowship right now all the ways you're touching the fellowship right now to give us the strength we need to be doers of the word and share the word of god around the world to every age however you lead us lord use us lord we say use us right now to spread the gospel in any way you see fit for us to be able to plant the seed lord help us lord to be able to plant the seed in every age, wherever we go, however you guide us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. Praise God, fellowship. Praise God, praise God. Before we close, before we close, I know someone's watching and listening for the first time who doesn't understand this fellowship is why, why this fellowship is always on fire, always praising always praying and coming together around the world as a fellowship to love and worship God and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Right now, someone's watching who doesn't understand the fire this fellowship has. So right now, I'm going into the closing prayers and the, pro and the, clo the prayer of salvation. As always, 
please no typing until after the closing prayers anything typed during the closing prayers is to need our respect for Holy Spirit amen right now I'm talking to the person listening and you've been here the whole time and you heard the praise and the worship and the sermon and the sharing but you can't connect right now because right now your life is falling apart worry fear stress anxiety is all over you families turning away from you friends stab you in the back and you may even feel like giving up on life right now yet somehow you find yourself on this channel have no idea how you got here and that's because God brought you here you're not here by accident God brought you here because God sees what you're going through right now physically spiritually emotionally and that's why you're here you may be here as a backslider in guilt for whatever reason you chose to leave God and go back to sin and now your life is falling apart because you went back in the devil's world and now the devil telling you once you leave God or fail God you could never go back and that right there is a lie from the pit of hell no one is perfect all have fallen short so if you said the prayer of salvation and you fell back into sin there is nothing the devil can do to take away your salvation just rededicate your life recommit your life to Christ and there's nothing the devil can do to stop you so if you walk right now as a backslider and you want to come back to the Lord or right now your life is filled with depression and darkness and hopelessness or you just don't know our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ either way I want you to pray with me right now repeat after me Father God forgive me for the wrong I've done and the wrong I've been I believe Jesus is the Son of God I believe he died on the cross for me and my sins and was raised from the dead I accept Jesus as the Lord and Savior and I commit right now I will not do a single thing in life or make a single decision in life without lifting up to you first create in me oh Lord a clean heart and remove from me anything and everything that's not like you in Jesus name now if you said that prayer sincerely your spirit is the right to receive the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit is a part of God that lives inside of us to teach us, to guide us, and to also convict us if you're not walking God's will. The Holy Spirit will show you people, activities, and things you're doing right now in your life, which is bringing darkness into your life. And he'll tell you how to reverse it. First of all, spend time with God every day. Feed your spirit. Starve your flesh, feed your faith, starve your doubt every day. And the more time you spend with God every day, the more you feel the Holy Spirit gets stronger and stronger in you, which is God letting you know it's going to be all right. God's got this. God's got you. The last step is to repent. And repent means to change your behavior from sinful behavior to godly behavior. And the stronger the Holy Spirit gets in you, he'll soon give you strength to be able to stop doing those things that are not like God. And next thing you know, the next thing you know, you'll be right there, online with God's will and God's way in Jesus' name. Right now, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we as a fellowship rebuke and bind the spiritual retribution, revenge, retaliation, backlash, and every other demonic spirit, named the unnamed, seen or unseen, who may try to attack anyone in this fellowship because of their participation in this fellowship. And we cast out every demonic spirit and we say, Lord, we say, cast them back to the pit of hell from which they came. And Father God, loose, Lord, loose into the fellowship, unspeakable joy. Loose peace beyond understanding. Loose restoration, Lord. Restore, restore every area of life, Lord. Loose reconciliation, Lord. Bring reconciliation to marriages and families right now. 
go falling apart because of the devil attack, Lord. And Lord, please keep your hedge protection over all the families and marriages who are not falling apart, but who the devil is still attacking every day, Lord. Loose supernatural healing, physical healing, spiritual healing, emotional healing, by your strike we heal. And we confess, Lord, we confess it every day. I believe I receive my healing in the name of Jesus. I believe I receive my healing in the name of Jesus every day. Confess it and thank him. Confess it and thank him. Pray as if your life depends on it. P-U-S-H. Pray until something happens. Loose. Supernatural overflow. Financial breakthrough. Supernatural debt cancellation. Lord, let your blessing, Lord, your blessing of abundance rain down, Lord. Rain down on a fellowship and financial need, whatever it is. For you to supply all our need according to your riches in glory, Christ Jesus. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I shall not want anything. The Lord is my shepherd. Let's say this together. Repeat after me, family. Repeat after me. For I am the head and not the tail. I am above and not beneath. I am the lender and not the borrower. I am blessed going in and blessed going out. I am blessed that I may be a blessing to others. I am out of debt. All my needs are met. I have plenty more to put in store. I am a child of God. And nothing shall my enemies hurt me or block my blessings in any way. In Jesus' name. And finally, Lord, finally, we thank you for a miracle, Lord. Each person here has a miracle they're praying for right now. And now we know, Lord, now we know every day. We take time every day and see it. Visualize your miracle every day. See it, believe it, and receive it in your heart. And as you receive it into your heart, expect it. Expect your miracle every day. We don't know the when. We'll never know the exact when. But because we don't know when, that means any day. Any day you wake up could be a day of the manifestation of the miracle you're praying for right now. So we expect your miracle every day. May the Lord bless you and keep your family. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord set his face a divine pool upon you and give you peace. That you be a blessing to everyone you touch or speak to. A blessing to everyone you pray over. A blessing to everyone you pass by. And bless when I open your mouth because the love and light of the Lord is all over you. 24 7, 365, including deep here. Father God, all these things we ask, Lord. All these things we ask. In Jesus' name we pray. The fellowship say, Amen. Amen. Amen.